Everyone wants to be the next Tifu, the next Booga, the next best of the best. But let's face it guys, sometimes we just go against people that are, well, better than us. You've gone through it, I've gone through it, everyone has gone through it. And I can guarantee you that at some point, every pro that you watch has also gone through it. We all gotta start somewhere, you know? That's why today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about how to outplay opponents that are better than you. You know me, I'm your host, Superman Dan, and I just wanna say, I appreciate all your support and really wanted to make a video like this because it's something that we can all take advantage of. Put it like this, if you're not winning all the games you play, then this video applies to you. But before the video starts, I got one tiny favor to ask you. We strive very hard to bring you the best content out there, so show us your support by liking the video, subscribing, and visiting ProGuys.com for the latest trending articles, VOD reviews, and just about everything that you could need to know about competitive Fortnite. We also have on-demand 24-7 coaching, so be sure to check that out by clicking the link in the description. Most of you don't do it, but I'm telling you, you're missing out. Also, we'd like to give a quick shout out to our friend Ghoulboy for showing us two really cool tricks in our previous video. Check him out, he's a great content creator. Alrighty guys, now I want to get into this video with a dose of truth, because in reality, you won't be able to win all of your fights against better players. Think about it, they are better players after all. The goal of this video is supposed to be a tool that points out some weak points from really good players and swings the pendulum in your advantage. If a really good player perceives you to not be good, or at least not as good as they are, well, the fact is, they're going to let their guard down in many reckless ways. My objective is to help you exploit your opponent's recklessness, and eventually, you'll become that good player that you currently fear. With that said, let's just get right into my first point, and that is fighting aggression with even more aggression of your own. Yes, guys, the idea of fighting fire with fire might not work in real life, but in Fortnite, works like a charm. Now, what I mean by this is not that you should jump out in the open and run around W-keying every living thing you see. Not at all. When you should be using this technique is when you've got someone that you know is better than you trying to W-key you. Yeah, really annoying when that happens. But now, you're going to have a counter, so yay! Okay, I'm gonna lay out a real Dan fact bomb on you right now. When a player pushes someone else's box, they put themselves in a very vulnerable position, but only for a brief moment. The reason why they're vulnerable is because they're unarmed. Yo, they've got that pickaxe out. Typically, people don't get aggressive enough during this short period when you can literally get a free shot on any player, even the best players in the world if you're fast enough. That's the catch though, you're gonna have to be fast. Don't be indecisive, if you see the opportunity, go for it. The moment that someone gets close enough to your side wall and pulls out the pickaxe, make a quick edit and you're getting the first pump shot 9 out of 10 times. It's super effective and has a high success rate, but the only catch is that you can only do it once. Once someone knows that you're willing to get the jump on them, their strategy will be much more passive. But at the end of the day, that's what you want. Make an opponent that's usually better than you fear you. The reason why a good player is good is because they use fighting strategies that are basically second nature to them to eliminate you. Me. I never shit on anyone that hard in my whole entire life. My whole life of being alive. You making a play like that is going to take your opponent out of his element. What is a distinguished warrior without his sword and shield? Spoiler alert, nothing. Just a friendly FYI, you don't always have to use the same edit to catch your opponent off guard. In fact, after the first edit, your opponent is likely to predict you to make the same edit again. Switch it up guys and make different edits once in a while. Maybe try out an edit bait reset or two to keep a potential adversary on his toes. In fact, we just went over a trick that allows you to trap kill an aggressive opponent which is in line with the gist of this video. You can check it out in the description or by simply heading over to our YouTube homepage and watching our most recent uploads. Now although counter aggressive plays work in close quarters combat, we need to stay disciplined when going up against good opponents. This is why we need to talk about not leaving your turtle. This point mainly applies to when you don't have high ground, for obvious reasons. When a good player takes height in a fight, they will typically bank on the fact that you will try and reclaim height. If you end up going for a high ground retake, a good player will typically land some decent damage on you in the process. You want to avoid these scenarios and outweigh your opponent. Yeah, yeah, I get it, sitting in a box is boring, but you want to beat someone better than you, right? Well, you're going to have to trust me on this one because the alternative isn't going to net you any better results. Anyways, back to the point, keep your composure, hold your walls in your box, and wait until he starts chopping your build. Once he's in range to start pushing your box, meaning he's dropped considerably from height, you now have a perfect opportunity to employ strategy number one from this video. 
You guys remember that tip we just talked about 30 seconds ago? You see, this trick really focuses on the choices you make in Fortnite and how you never really need to push into an unfavorable situation, even if your mind is unconsciously telling you to do so. Breaking those habits and staying patient will allow you to manipulate where your opponent is in a fight and use some solid tactics to give yourself a fighting chance. It is worth noting that there are some situations that will simply force you to migrate, such as if someone spams you with utility. Think stinks, grenades, grenade launchers, rockets, and all that jazz. If you find yourself in that situation, just tunnel your way to safety and reassess the situation. Also, if you have no mobility and have a long way to get to the safe zone, maybe it's time to expedite a play. Better that you have a chance of getting the kill and surviving than dying 100% by sticking around too long. The main takeaway from this tip is to bait your opponent down closer to your level so you can make an unpredictable attack on them. Whatever means necessary for you to make that happen, but never put yourself in a vulnerable position. Now, on the flip side, it's worth talking about never giving up high ground. I literally just talked for an entire minute about why you need to bait the person from high ground down to your level. So when you actually end up with high ground, you better not fall for these mistakes. Now, we already talked about why falling from height puts you in a vulnerable spot, giving your opponent an opportunity to get a nearly uncontested shot on you a lot of the times, yada yada. We already covered that. Let's discuss some other options about when you are on height to safely whittle down a good player. First, you're going to want to exhaust all of your utility items. If the player you're fighting is truly better than you, then now is a better time than ever to lay out all the wild cards in your inventory. Give them everything you got. If that doesn't work, you're going to want to try baiting out an edit. Try pickaxing their turtles from the top, meaning you're going to be standing a layer above them and smacking their roof piece. Hit the roof with your pickaxe, switch back to your shotgun. Hit with your pickaxe, switch back to your shotgun. Repeat this as needed and see if he falls for the bait. If he opens up his roof, then congratulations because you have a free shot right at his head. No matter what you end up doing on high ground, it's absolutely crucial that you do it in a protected manner. Do not let them have an opportunity to shoot you without your ability to trade another shot out. Don't get too aggressive and drop to their lair because after all, they are pretty skilled and will find the opportunity to steal height from you and put you in a less desirable position. While we're on the topic of less desirable positions, let's take a look at how we can actually dodge a fight against a really good player using positioning. If you are in a scrim type scenario and there are people all around you, why not employ a good old fashioned rotate? This one might seem a little more obvious. If the player is good, try not to fight him to begin with. Well, that's half the equation, but for the scenario where we're playing a somewhat stacked scrim lobby, which I know you guys are always playing, you actually want to use the fact that there are loads of watchful eyes in your game to your advantage. You see, a really good player loves to single people out in the mid to late game to secure additional elimination points. Typically, they will hunt their prey based on who's the easiest to kill. Think about someone who's in a really safe position on the map and there's low opportunity for third partying. This is the equivalent of a mid-afternoon snack for a good player. Now, if you are in the scenario where a good player is aggressing you in a scrim, your objective would be to use the players all around you to ward him off. Yeah, you can use utility like launch pads, impulses, or whatever to get out of dodge, but this really addresses the cases when you don't have extra rotational items to spare. The best way to sneak away without burning utility is by tunneling all around opponent builds to provide additional cover and separation between you and whoever the heck is chasing you down. And guys, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Who in their right mind will hunt you down across multiple opponents and put themselves in very vulnerable position in the process? Well, if they did that, then they must not be that good, or at the very minimum, smart to begin with. All right, to brush over everything that we covered in this video one more time, first, you're going to fight aggression with aggression. Someone pushes your box, fight him back when he is most vulnerable, when he has his pickaxe out. That'll surely turn the tides of the fight in your favor. Second, if your opponent is holding height, use patience and alternative techniques to bait your opponent down to your level so you can employ the first strategy. Third, never give up high ground. If you're trying to get your opponent to drop from high ground to exploit their weaknesses, why would you give them the same opportunity? Finally, use tunnels, shield bubbles, shockwaves, and basically any other resources you got to take advantage of third partying. Alrighty folks, that's going to be it for the video. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions in the comments down below, and as always, leave a like if you're enjoying this content. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!